Good day to each and everyone, to my dear viewer or viewers. My name is Marian T. Leda from BS Ed Major in Social Studies, Section 1-2. This video is for the project uh, Purpose of Communication. Today, I will be interviewing one of the teacher here in Ubuhan Elementary School for our project called Interviewing Professionals and Communication in Personal and Work Settings. Um, Resh assured that the one that I will be interviewing today is um, well informed and agreed to to be interviewed for project for purposes. So without further ado, let's get into the interview. Once again, good day to each and everyone. We have here at the moment one of the teachers of Ubuhan Elementary School, Miss Charity Brunidor. Good day, ma'am. Hello, everyone, and good day also to you. Okay, so uh, to start, without further ado, let's start our interview. Uh, for our first question, ma'am, how do you typically communicate with your students and colleagues? Can you describe your usual approach? Uh, yes, I communicate with my students and colleagues through a mix of verbal, written, and digital means, prioritizing um, clarity and approachability. Okay, so what are the differences in how you communicate informally with colleagues compared to more formal settings like staff meetings, ma'am? Alright, so I have, I can count on my fingers the staff meetings, so... Um, informally, I use casual language and personal anecdotes. In formal settings, I focused on structured discussions and using professional terminology. Okay, yes, that's it. So, next question, ma'am. What techniques do you use when communicating with parents or guardians to ensure clarity and understanding? about their child's progress in school all right so um i utilize clear um specific language and provide concrete examples of their child's work and child's work and progress because it is very important and i often supplemented it by visual aids okay so can you share any example of a time when effective communication with a student or parent made a significant difference in the <coughs> educational journey. Uh, yes, I've encountered this one uh, once. So I communicate. I communicated regularly with a parent whose child is struggling in academics. Mm -hmm. um, I share progress updates that motivated. The student um, to do and improve their performance significantly. Okay. So um, another question, ma'am. Yes. How do you handle difficult or challenging conversations with students, parents, or even colleagues? All right. So as a teacher, dili lang juta always the yow yow and so on. So I approach difficult communications with empathy mm -hmm. and you should also have a active listening and focus and finding solution together okay so uh, can you recall an instance when you had to adjust your communication style based on the audience such as the uh, different age age groups or learning needs what was the situation and how did you adapt Okay, so I was handling, or I am a subject teacher, I am a subject teacher in grade 3 and grade 5. So there is a 
for me, mo siya language barrier kay um mm-hmm. one to three using MTP. MTP. Well, yes, while four, five, six, the higher the level is, they use English, mm-hmm. Filipino, and so on. So, uh, I once tailored my communication for a younger student by using more visual aids mm-hmm. and simplified language like kanang dili lang jud siya ingon nga kanang for sa English ako pa gina siyang i-translate of to to, to make them yes, understand isaya, to make them understand good of unsa na siya unsay meaning ana nga mm-hmm. word and um which improved our engagement in the class <laughs> Because interactions with your students are very important. Mm-hmm. So, kay MTB man, and you need also to kanang ko an English kanang maapply po nila sa English. So, mo nang um, you need to simplify the language. That's so, right. Dali lang nila masabot. Yes. Okay. Uh, next question, ma'am. How does changing your way of communicating? Influence the outcomes in different teaching scenarios. All right, so I have my experience in a private school, and mm. there is a big I, difference. Before kani sulod, oh yes, as a public, public school, teacher, oh. there is a big difference. So, kaysa private school, most of us speak in English, good. Mm-hmm. Then, pag abot na sa public school, ato na ka na kayo. Okay. Grabe ang, um, there is a gap yun. So, adjusting my communication style often leads to um, better understanding. Okay. As what I've said, sa grade 3, Bisaya. And then, sa grade 5, English. English. <laughs> so, there is, through that, nga, kanang, ni adjust ko to MPB, ano it increased participation mm. and more effective in learning outcomes. So, mas makasabot din yun ang mga bata if si teacher po mo adjust, mm. dili, po ang, dili lang ang students, students ang mo adjust ni yeah. teacher. Yes. Okay. So, another question ma'am. What are some common communication challenges you face in your role as a teacher? Common challenges include misinterpretation of mm, yeah. messages different expectations expectations mm-hmm. and um, varying levels of engagement okay na, there are students nga grabe ka active na mm. students nga kinahanglan pa nimo i-push they're different yes so there are those are some of the challenges i encountered okay, okay so Another or next question, ma'am. Yes. How do you manage and overcome obstacles in communication within the classroom and within the school community? Okay, there are a lot of obstacles. Yeah. So, I will just mention a few of them. I overcome obstacles by actively um, listening, mm. seeking feedback with my seniors. And adjusting my approach based on on the needs of my audience, on my students. That's it. So listening yes. is one of the most important, important. part when communicating. Yes, of course. Dili lang jud kay magsigur tayo ngon sa mga students. You should listen to me. There are times that a teacher must listen to the audience or to your students before putting <coughs> any act yes that's so, right actually ma'am it is <coughs> the last question i have but uh may i ask if is it okay if i add more uh, follow-up questions for more clarifications okay. yeah it's okay. okay okay so uh my one of my follow-up questions would be could you provide a specific example of a time when your communication style had to be adopted to resolve a conflict within a student or a parent. Alright, so, um, I think first, uh, yes. take your time. Uh. Alright, so, um, in one instance, a parent was upset about the grades of mm. her child. So, all 
I did was I listened, I acknowledged the concern of the parents and worked together on a plan to support on how her child um, gain more to, or to level up her grades, grades or, or performance yes performance school. academically and um, through this it helped elevate the tension between the teacher mm -hmm. and the parent. the parent yes it's very normal nga makaduhog og reklamo mm -hmm. sa parents nga nung nga ni man uh, honor man siya last year normal na sa mga teacher yes, so dili na angay murag mahadlok as long mm -hmm. as uh, si teacher maka provide of evidence or no, why? the record no, of no, the no. child nga nung ingani iyahang grades mm -hmm. uh one last question ma'am <laughs> yes okay uh what did you learn from that experience, the one you said earlier, and how has it influenced your future communication approaches? Actually, um, so from that experience, I learned the importance of <clears throat> patience and clarity. Dili lang kasi mong student dapat na ay pasensya. You will give your patience also to the parents. Mm -hmm. Yes, so it influencing me to always um, prioritize open dialogue in future interactions. That's it. Thank you so much, ma'am. <clears throat> that would be all my questions. So, uh, once again, thank you so much for, uh, for your time and for considering my invite as one of my um, interview for my project. Thank you so much, ma'am. Yes. So, um, I need you. you're so welcome. I hope that those answers will help you um, and also um, you will get some um, points and um, learnings on those <laughs> answers. That's all. Thank you so much, ma'am. And for this moment, I would end the video. Thank you. Good day again to each and everyone. As of now, right after my interview with Teacher Charity, I am here again to share my reflection regarding to the interview we conducted a while ago. This experience made me understand the importance of effective communication, active listening, and adapting our approach based on the audience. I realized that in every communication we have, listening first is one of the most important parts. Before stating any opinions or taking action, we need to analyze everything in order to make organized and precise decisions. One thing is that we also have to consider whether we're talking to a group of people with whom we should speak formally or to an environment or group where we can speak casually or informally. In my interview, I spoke with a professional teacher, which is one of my desired professions for the future. I can say that during the interview, I learned and understand a lot, not just about to communicate properly with different people and environments, but also about how to manage potential difficult situations I may face as a future teacher. Being professional also means being mindful in situations like meeting students' parents, handling a chaotic class, and especially having great patience in certain scenarios. This attitude applies not only to teachers, but also to other professions as well. Having that kind of patience is truly a valuable achievement. It allows you to deal with challenging situations calmly and compositely. These are the insights I gained right after the interview. I did learn a lot of things regarding to communicating, not just as a student, but also as a future educator. I hope to apply them in the future to enhance my interaction with my future work environment or even with other people as well. And that would be all. Thank you.